Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. You know, it describes this place of intimacy. It describes this kind of vision of where who you are, of, of your interests and even your problems in life are known by people and are accepted and you are cared for. And I think that's one of the reasons why Cheers was such a popular show. Beyond just the fabulous writing and, and humor and character development, it held this vision of intense intimacy where people were cared for and known. Well, beyond mere movie familiarity and television theme song, God knows us. In his love and his desire for relationship with us, with you, God has poured over our life And in this depth of knowledge, it speaks to God's dwelling intimately with us. God doesn't just know us. God dwells with us. You are loved so much that he is with you in all places, in all times. Verses 7 through 9 talk about this. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I ride on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. And again, you can kind of read this verse as simply highlighting, you know, the omnipresence of God, this philosophical concept that God is everywhere at all times, but it actually speaks a lot deeper than this. One of the commentaries that I that I read said this. This is not a God who is present everywhere, in some indwelling sense, but one who is actively in pursuit. Right? When the psalm talks about the heavens and the depths, the wings of the dawn and the edge of the sea, what is being expressed and described is the totality of the universe. You can kind of paraphrase this as up and down, left and right. There is no place where we could be that God would not follow. There is no place that God would rather be than with us. And so God will pursue us. God will be with us. God will follow us each and every place we go. On my bookshelf, in my office, uh, there's a lot of books. One of the books that I probably read, probably more often than I probably should, is a book called Children's Letters to God. It's a fabulous little book. Most of the entries are kind of funny little quips about how children understand God's working within the world. Uh, For example, Joyce, this little girl named Joyce, writes, Dear God, thank you for the baby brother, but what I prayed for was a puppy. (laughs) Uh, And there's a whole host of other funny stuff. Uh, But within this book, there's also some letters which are more serious in nature. Nora writes, Dear God, I don't ever feel alone since I found out about you. Right? Nora, however old Nora is, she gets it. She gets it. She understands that no matter where she goes in life, no matter where she ends up, no matter what she faces, she's never alone because God is right there with her. Not only does God follow and not only does God pursue, but God surrounds. If you look at verse 5, David writes, you hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand on me. Again, there's this picture of God's presence encompassing us for our blessing, for our security, for our protection. Let me ask you something. Um, What are you going through in your life right now? As I said, it's generally accepted that David is not experiencing the easiest time in his life. He's not writing this from a point of everything is hunky-dory and rainbows and roses. What about you? Is everything great in your life at this moment? Or are you facing some trial, some struggle? If you are facing some some struggle, some tr- uh, some, something daunting, um, would you echo that making your way in the world today sure would take a lot? Think about the reality that you're facing. Think about that for a moment. Think about how big it might seem. 
Think about how kind of in those dark moments, how unbeatable it might appear. Think about the fear, think about the anxiety that you feel as you come close to it or as you tackle it or struggle with it. So often it's easy to enter into those times with the attitude that we do so alone, that we are all all by ourselves. We feel isolated, we feel abandoned. Now let the words of this psalm break into that place. Even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. It's an image of protection. It's an image of defense. Right? In the ancient world, the right hand was the hand of action. It was the hand of battle. To have someone at your right hand was to have someone to defend you, to act for you, to protect you, and to keep you safe. When the extremes of life, God is our protection and God is our defense. God is there as close as he can be in order to jump into action for his people. Even in the depths, as he says. Now the literal word, word that David uses is Sheol, which is the place of the dead. Even in death, God is there to act for us, to defend us. Even there, God pursues us. What a fabulous foreshadow to the truth that we see in Christ. What a fabulous image that the cross is God visually enacting this truth. That in the empty tomb, Jesus makes it clear for all of us that the place of death holds no limits to God's presence. That even there he will be, even there he will pursue us, even there he will protect us, even there, in the place where you may think that there is no life and there is no hope, God will be there to give us life and safety and security. So at the end of this psalm, after reflecting greatly about how God has lovingly reached out for him, David comes to this place of reaching out after God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. It's almost an echo of verse 1. David reaches out to God in a prayer which he longs to experience the intimacy of God, to feel the peace that comes from that. He prays that God dwell with him in his anxious thoughts that God protect him. And there's this confessional quality as David turns over his entire life, his entire self to God. See if there is any offensive way. He asks God to strip away those things that mar or tarnish his relationship. He asks God to further protect and to guide him along paths of life everlasting. This psalm is fabulous. Because it shatters the sometimes dry, lifeless, and philosophical concept of God that we can so easily run around with. It holds before us that fundamental truth that God not only intimately knows us and is present with us, but we can intimately know God as well. We can reach out. We can experience God in the spaces of our life, no matter where we are or no matter the extremes that we face. It is out of this intimacy, out of this connection and relationship with God, who personally dwells with us, that we receive hope, we receive life, we receive peace. This reality itself that transforms our faith from being simply a a philosophy of religion into an intimate and life-giving relationship. So as you go about your life this week, wherever you end up going, in whatever direction life takes you, to whatever extremes you may find yourself, may you know the warmth of the Lord's presence surrounding you. May you have confidence in the midst of any trial. May you feel God hem you in from before and behind. May you know God's protection and strength. And may you reach out to God in a heartfelt desire to know and to be fully known. Amen.